Well, Merry Christmas, everybody. Man, what an incredible morning so far. Wasn't that music amazing today? And just being able to worship together, I think somebody was excited about it. Go ahead and try to start that again. There you go. You gotta come in strong with that. You just led the whole room. No, I'm excited about this week. Obviously, Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve service, as you guys have heard online. Uh, my, my hope is that you would gather your family and uh, just be able to celebrate uh, no matter where you're at, out of town, in town. Uh, starts at three, it'll, it'll play on the hour for the rest of the evening. So it'll be a great opportunity. And of course, next Sunday, uh, being online, uh, don't forget that. Uh, online only next Sunday as we look at all the cool, amazing things that God did uh, last year. And, and we're gonna hear a lot of different stories. It's gonna be an inspiring time. So I'm excited to gather online with you. Uh, let's turn in our Bible today to uh, John chapter 12. Uh, John chapter 12. And some of you might think, eh, John 12, that's actually not the Christmas story trend. Uh, what's up with that? Uh, John 12, we're gonna see why Jesus came and uh, we're gonna understand why Jesus uh, comes to save the world. And we'll be there in just a moment. But uh, you know, one of my favorite things about Christmas are all the lights. Uh, I don't know if you're a sucker for the lights, but I love lights on the tree, lights on the house. We had lights on, on the church this year, which looked beautiful. And uh, you go to Dollywood, the lights are amazing, right? Uh, and in our city, they put up lights. Downtown Knoxville, there's lights. It just, it just brings all the feels, right? I love uh, all the lights that, that come along with Christmas. And it's interesting that on that first Christmas, lights were a major theme as well. Uh, you'll remember uh, the, the angels put on this big light show for the shepherds as they were in the field. And, and then uh, not long after, we see um, uh, the wise men being led by a bright light in the sky. It was a, a star. And, and so uh, lights are kind of a theme in that first Christmas. But it's also interesting that December 21st, uh, tomorrow, is, is actually the longest night of the year. If you realize this, but December is actually the darkest month of the entire year. The, the days are really short and uh, the nights are really long. That's why when you wake up and go to work, you know, it's, it's dark outside. Then you, you go to work and by the time you get in your car, most likely the sun is already setting and it's down. If, if you're uh, in class all day, you really never see the sun. If you stick around after school for practice, you never get to see uh, the sun uh, during the month of December. And, and that's always interesting to me why we chose to celebrate Christmas in the darkest month of the year, probably because it's a little depressing and we needed something like Christmas to cheer us up. But uh, this darkest time of the year um, also could be a reality in your life. You know, for some of you, you might say that 2020 has been the darkest year of your life. Maybe you've gone through some darkness and I don't have to go into detail. I mean, we've all kind of experienced this, you know, a pandemic, quarantine, uh, maybe business isn't what you had hoped it would be. We had the election year and all the craziness of protests and riots and all of the things that this year has, has brought us. And, and as a result, you might really kind of be feeling this darkness in and around your life. I was reading some of the latest stats on the effects of, of COVID on people. It's no surprise that alcohol consumption is high. Prescription drug use is higher. Uh, you've got depression that is higher. And suicidal thoughts, they're saying, is also at a record high. I mean, our emotional health this year has really gone through the ringer. And it doesn't matter really how emotional, intelligent you are. This has been a hard year for all of us. And, and the truth is, uh, every single one of us will go through dark moments in our life. Every single one of us will experience some darkness in our, in our life. Maybe, maybe you've lost a loved one and, and that brings a, a dark season into your life. Maybe it was just financial troubles that you've gone through and, and that brought some darkness. Maybe it's loneliness and, and that loneliness has kind of led to a dark season in your life. And, and we know what happens in the darkness, right? We know what happens in, in, in dark seasons in our life. And, and it's really kind of the same thing that happens when you try to walk in darkness at home. Have you ever done that? The lights are turned off and, and uh, you know, you're walking around in the house. And if you're a parent, you've, you've gone through this. You've walked through the, the hallway. It's dark. You don't see it, but there's a Lego in the hallway floor. And you step on that Lego barefoot. Oh my gosh, the pain shoots up the leg 
right to the spine, right to the brain and out through the fire in your eyes, you're ready to kill somebody, right? So, it's so painful and, and, and then we immediately pick up that leg and then we start bouncing around like an idiot, right? It's dark. Well, we know the truth about Legos though, they're kind of like cockroaches. There's never just one. There's, there's bound to be 10 more around somewhere. Then you, you step on another one and now you're ready to murder somebody. You're so uh, in pain and, and uh, you know, that's kind of what happens when we try to navigate in our house in the dark. Sometimes we get hurt. And what happens when we are living our life in spiritual darkness? Very much the same thing. You've experienced this in your life. When you're walking in spiritual darkness, you get hurt and you hurt other people. You get hurt and you hurt other people. You, you sometimes physically get hurt. You most likely emotionally will get hurt, right? You're, you're also hurting yourself when you're walking in sinful behaviors. And as a result of that, you're gonna actually hurt other people as well. And, and, and so we know this to be true in our life because we've, we've all tended to experience this. And as we walk in that darkness, we, we get hurt, we hurt others. And that brings these emotions in our life of, of sometimes just despair. Sometimes it's just, you know, depression. Sometimes it's just a lack of hope in our life. And, and the, 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 that, that, that emotion just grows within us. We start to feel like life is really pointless and, and we know that it should mean something more. We feel in our bones that there is something more, but we never can quite grasp what that is. Ultimately, when we live in spiritual darkness, we feel all these negative feelings and emotions because we're separated from God. You see, every single one of us is born with a sin nature. Every single one of us, when we're born, we are separated from God. And a result of being separated from God is spiritual darkness, which leads to all of those negative emotional feelings that we've all experienced. And because of that separation though, because we are in spiritual darkness, God gave us Christmas. Right? Christmas changes everything. And the reality that we get to celebrate and understand that God did not leave us in the dark. He sent Jesus into the world to light up the darkness in this world and in your life. And this year more than ever, I think we need the light of Christmas. You gotta be reminded today that you are not alone. Though you feel alone, though you might be hurting today, though you may be going through a dark season today, Christmas reminds us that we are not alone. And as we look at the Christmas story, we realize that Mary and Joseph were going through some dark moments in their life. We like to watch the, you know, the TV shows and the movies about the story and it looks all wonderful and, and, and beautiful, but, but they were going through some really dark times in their life. When you think about what they were going through, you, you really start to resonate with them. I mean, let's start with Mary, for instance. Mary had to be stressed out. She had to be, right? Remember, she's a young woman, not married. She becomes pregnant, a pregnant virgin. <laughs> like, how do you explain that to the community? I mean, not even the media could spin this to kind of put her in a better light. Like this, there's, there's no explaining this and you can only imagine what the community was saying about her. And so her life is filled with stress. I mean, just think about that first conversation she had with her mom about the situation. Can you imagine that? Mom, I gotta tell you something. Let me start by saying, I promise you, all we did was kiss. That was it, that was it, right? I mean, that had to be terrible. Uh, and then as the pregnancy moves along, now she's nine months pregnant and her husband Joseph says, hey, uh, let's go on a 90 mile journey. Here's a donkey, hop on the donkey and we're gonna take a long ride. I mean, how terrible would that have been? Any women wanna sign up for that journey? <laughs> I mean, stress was just a part of the whole experience for her. And sure, we can't resonate with a lot of the things that she was going through, but we could all say we've all been stressed out. The life has a way of just bringing stress into our life, doesn't it? Every single person in the room could tell some stories about 2020 and the anxiety and the stress that it has brought into your life. And, and if it wasn't 2020, it's another situation. It's a marriage, it's a relationship. It's, it's some kind of financial issue that, that brought an enormous amount of stress in your life. 
But then we also think of Joseph and, and Joseph had his own issues that he was dealing with. But I would say that Joseph had to be disappointed and he had to be doubting this whole situation. He's expecting this great life. We're gonna get married. We're gonna ha- get a house. And he's disappointed with the reality that everything has been blown up by God. Sure, he had a, a, a dream and the angel told him that Mary was gonna give birth to the Messiah and he believed and, and that was wonderful. But come on, surely he had moments where he doubted the whole thing. Surely there was a moment where he was like, are you kidding me, God? We, 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 the Hilton's not open, right? We can't get an Airbnb up in this city. You're, we're in a cave You know, what kind of husband am I? I can't even provide a proper place for my wife to give birth here. We're in a, we're we're, we're with the animals. And and this, this was a disappointing, it had to be like this moment of doubt. I mean, God, you said it was the son of God. So like, shouldn't we be in a palace right now? And I don't know about you if you're a parent, but we all have as parents, our own doubts and our own ability to parent our kids. Like we, we doubt all the time. Like I, at least I do, like I don't have what it takes to raise this child. Like I, I don't know what I'm doing half the time, right? Can you imagine Joseph? This is the son of God and good luck Joseph parenting him. <laughs> I mean, there had, some be some, there had to be some discouragement and some doubt in his life as he's experiencing this. And, and we can relate to the stress. We can relate to the doubt. We can relate to some of the disappointments, because we've all been there. We've been doubting God, like, God, why aren't you stepping into this current situation to fix it? We've we've been disappointed this year. I mean, students in the room, school has been messed up for you, right? Sports is messed up. And, And as a result, there's some disappointment there. Maybe you're a business owner and the year hasn't gone as expected and you're disappointed with how it's gone. And, and so we've all dealt with this. But the key here is how do we deal with it? How do, we, how do we cope with those emotions? Because if we don't turn to God for answers, what we begin to do is we begin to uh, consume a lot of drugs or consume alcohol or, uh, or you know, materialistic endeavors kind of flood our system. Why? I mean, Christmas is, is, is like the, the drug of choice for uh, the materialistic addict, right? I get to run up my credit cards again and, and not feel guilty this time because it's Christmas. And what we find ourselves doing is instead of dealing with the doubt, the disappointment, the discouragement and running to God with that, what we do is we find other ways to cope. And that just basically distracts us from feeling that and, and from understanding that and, and processing that in a healthy way. And, and so many of us have uh, developed perhaps some bad habits, some sinful habits to be able to cope with some of these negative emotions. So how do we break out of that darkness? How do we break out of that darkness and into the light of the gospel, the light of Jesus? Well, in John chapter 12, he tells us why he came to save the world. And he gives us four reasons for why he came. And I think they're incredibly helpful. So let's take a look at John 12 together, uh, beginning in verse 44. And it says this, Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me, his father. And whoever sees me, sees him who sent me. Again, talking about God as his father. I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. The one who rejects me and does not receive my words has a judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the father who sent me has himself given me a commandment, what to say and what to speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I say, therefore, I say as the father has told me. So four reasons today that that we can have hope and and understand why Jesus came into the world to save the world, why we why we even uh, celebrate Christmas um, every single year and every day. And the first reason is in verse 46. He's essentially saying, I came to save the world so that you may not remain in darkness. And so if you're taking notes, Jesus saves the world because he does not want you to remain in the darkness. He doesn't want you to stay there. He wants to bring light into your life. He came as the light of the world. 
and he wants to shed light on every situation. He wants to bring life and light into your heart, into your relationships. And he doesn't want us to remain in darkness. And so God sends Jesus into the world to bring us out of the darkness. Maybe the reason why you're experiencing a dark season in your life today is not because of your circumstances. It's because you have never given your life to Jesus. You've never surrendered your life to him. Sure, you've heard about him. You know the Christmas story, Mary, Joseph, angels, all that stuff but you've never actually given Jesus your life. You've never said, I am making you the Lord of my life. I'm giving you all authority. And so I'm gonna serve you, follow you, be changed by you. Now, some of you would say, I I I know Christians, they're hypocrites. I don't agree with half the things they say or do. So there's no way I'm giving my life to Jesus. And I just wanna challenge you for a minute. What if instead of you know, pointing the finger at other people who don't live up to your standards, what if you actually examined Jesus for himself? What if you actually studied the word of God? What if you actually said, you know what? Let me just put everything else to the side and let me go to the Bible and actually see what Jesus says about himself. Because he's either a liar or he is actually the truth. There's no middle ground here of him being a good guy or a good teacher. He's either crazy and he's a liar or He is the savior of the world. See, the true meaning of Christmas is that God loves you and you're not alone. The true meaning is that he doesn't want you to remain in the darkness. And he didn't come to rob you of happiness. He actually came to show you the way to happiness. And he wants to provide that for you today. Some of you would say, well, I am a Christian, but I'm also experiencing some darkness in my life. And That happens as believers, we get tempted to sin and so we'll we'll make decisions and we'll start some some habits and some behaviors that will lead us into a sinful, uh, dark place in our life. And as we do that, we have to realize that doubt, discouragement, worry always follows those sinful behaviors, right? And as we do that, we've got to remind ourselves that Jesus came so that you would not run back to the darkness, we, we, we are free from that lifestyle. We're free from those emotions. And so why is it that so often as Christians, we just run back to that negativity. We run back to those sinful behaviors. And Jesus would say, I came to save this world by taking you out of the darkness. Don't remain there. He gives you the option today. You can step out of that darkness and into his light. The second thing that we learn here is in verse 47, where Jesus said, I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. Now, this is interesting. Think about this. When Jesus comes to save the world, he's doing this because he wanted to save the world, not judge the world. And then this is an important truth for us to wrestle with today and, 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 and understand because as we think about this, we, we realize that Christmas teaches us that Jesus is coming into the world as a humble baby. His entire life is dedicated to healing people and loving on people and caring for uh, people and giving food to those in need. And and his entire life was dedicated to service and ministry and, and loving other people. And so this is why he's coming into the world. But the second time that Jesus comes into the world is gonna be completely different. The first time he comes, he comes as a humble baby. The second time Jesus comes, the Bible says that he's coming with fire in his eyes and a sword in his mouth. Now, what does that mean? Uh, A little freaky, right? Well, here in our passage, he tells us exactly why. The first time he's coming to save, the second time he's coming to judge. In verse 48, he says that his words are gonna be the judge. The word that I have spoken will judge him when? On the last day. So Jesus comes to save the world because there will be a judgment on the last day. Comes as a baby, humble, save the world. Second time he's bringing judgment. And, and, and what is the basis of this judgment? He says that it, it, it's, it's his word that he has spoken that will be the judge. Right, so God's word he's saying is what's gonna judge us. In Revelation 19, it says that the sword will be in his mouth. 
In Ephesians 6, it calls the word of God the sword of the spirit. And in Hebrews 4, it says that the word of God is like a sharp sword. So the point here is that that Jesus is saying that my judgment is grounded in my word. And his word is like a sharp sword. It cuts uh, deep within us. Um, And it cuts all the way to our souls and penetrates our hearts, our cold, dark heart with the truth of the gospel. And so this is the ground for his judgment, the standard for his judgment, his very word. Now listen, the word of God has everything that you need to know about life, about death, about living your life with purpose, about living your life with meaning. The word of God shows us how to please God, how to worship God. The word of God teaches us how to honor him, how to live a life that is committed to him, how to live a life that brings joy and happiness into our life. It is all we need in order to have those questions answered today. So Jesus comes into the world saving it because he recognizes that one day we're gonna be held accountable for all of our actions. And, and the reality is we think we're getting away with stuff or we can distract ourselves and not think about it, but we can hide something from our parents, we can hide something from our spouse, but nothing is, is, is hidden from the eyes of God. And so this is the, the reality of, of, of how we have to look at this and how we wanna move forward. Do we wanna move forward in darkness? Do we wanna move forward in his light? Finally, in verse 50, he teaches us that God's commandment is that we would have eternal life. He says, what I say, therefore, I say as the father has told me. The father is giving him the words that bring eternal life and he is sharing that with us and sending him into the world to provide that. So God is sending Jesus at Christmas to to save the world because God wants you to have eternal life. That is great news. I mean, imagine if God created everything and just ignored us. Imagine God just creating everything and spinning the world in orbit and and not really caring, not really talking to us, not really communicating to us, not really sharing anything in our life. He just wants us to live this life. Imagine the hopelessness that we would feel. And and those who don't believe in God or don't think he exists, like an agnostic or um, an atheist, they, they, they would experience this, right? But the reality is we celebrate Christmas because God didn't want you to stay and remain in the darkness. God didn't want you to be alone. God wanted to have a relationship with you. God wanted you to experience eternal life. And that is the best news any of us could ever hear. That our heavenly father loves us so much that he would suffer and die so that we could have joy and life everlasting. You see, some of us get stuck in some dark seasons. And some of you might be there, you're kind of stuck in a dark season. And the book of Ecclesiastes speaks to these seasons and times. And it says that there's a time for everything. In January, we're gonna go through an entire study of the book of Ecclesiastes. I cannot wait, it's changing my life, just studying it and can't wait to share it. And so much wisdom and truth, especially with everything that we're going through now, um, individually and just what we're facing in the world. And the truth about what we see in Ecclesiastes about these seasons is that Seasons come, but seasons go. So no matter where you're at today, the good news is that you don't have to live in that season any, anymore, any, any longer, if you have never given your life to Christ. Scripture says today is the day of salvation. And so we can give our life to Jesus today. He can bring us out of that darkness right here, right now. Now, for those that would say, you know, I, I'm already a believer, but I'm still going through some stuff. And, and I would say, have you run to Jesus? Are you running to Jesus? Are you connecting with Jesus? The first step, whether you're not a believer or you're a, you are a believer, you're kind of struggling today is confession. It's just simply confessing to God whatever it is that, that you are agreeing with him, that this is sin, this is this is what I'm doing and I recognize that it is wrong. The Bible also talks about repentance and repentance means that we're turning away from that. And so when when we agree with God that this relationship is sinful, I'm gonna confess it and repentance is I'm gonna cut that relationship off and I'm gonna turn to Jesus. If it's a sinful habit, 
then I'm gonna cut that sinful habit out of my life and I'm turning from that sinful habit and I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn to Jesus and I'm gonna allow his word to change me and I'm gonna follow him. And some of us as believers haven't got that reality. That's not just something you did one time in your life. It's something that you continually do. And the reason why you would stay in a dark place is because you would refuse to do that and step into life with Christ. I don't know who you are, what you're dealing with, but I do know that December is the darkest month of the year. And for some people in the room, it feels like the darkest season of your life. And I wonder if there are some people in the room that would say, you know what? I've never given my life to Jesus. And today I'd love to commit my life to him, step out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. So if you're in the room, if you're at home watching today, let's just all bow our heads and let's just spend a moment with God. Let's spend some time to reflect upon our relationship with him today. And I wonder in this room today, I wonder who might be watching online today, if, if there's somebody in here that would say, I've never given my life to Jesus and I wanna do that today. Would you just kind of slip your hand up? Let me see it, see if anybody in here and then just put it back down. Anybody at all? I see one. Anybody else to say, that is me looking all the way up in the top. If you're at home today and you're saying that's me, let's take a moment now. Let me lead you in a prayer. You can put it in your own words but I'll, I'll give you this prayer just as a guide for you and for those in the room that wanna give their life to Jesus. And you just simply say, God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I confess that I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my life today, save me. I believe Jesus died on the cross, and rose from the grave. I wanna step out of darkness and into his marvelous light. If that is a commitment that you've made, if you're at home, coming up on your screen is a way for you to connect with us. If you're in the room, use your phone, scan that little QR code. It'll take you to a landing page that basically you say, yeah, I gave my life to Jesus today. And why is that important? It's important because we wanna walk with you. Following Jesus is not a lone ranger kind of thing. It's not something you do by yourself. It's too difficult. And so we've got some resources we wanna give to you. We wanna encourage you. We wanna be a support for you. And so who, whoever you are, take time to do that today. God, we're thankful for those in the room and at home who gave their life to Christ today. You know, as, as you can look up here again, pray that that spirit would just continue this week as you think about your life and where you're at with your relationship uh, with the Lord. December might be the darkest month of the year, but every day after Tuesday, a little bit more light in the day, each day. Each day, there's a little bit more light. So as we get into you know, January and February, every day there's a little bit more light. And that, that brings hope when you think about it. And the reality is every day you walk with Jesus, you get just a little bit more of his light into your life. Your faith grows just a little bit more every time you open up the word of God and read it and seek to live it out and seek to worship him and, Every step that you take towards the gospel, a little bit more light comes into your life. Today, we wanna close our time by singing my favorite Christmas carol, Silent Night. And when you walked in, you should have received a candle. And what we're gonna do just as a symbol of the light of the world coming into this darkness, we're gonna sing this song. We're gonna light these candles and let this be something that could resonate that even in the midst of this dark season, this Christmas will remind us that Jesus, the light of the world, doesn't want you to remain in darkness. He wants you to experience his light. So our volunteers are gonna 
move into place and they're gonna light the candles on the outside aisles and then you just share that light all the way down as we sing. Let's pray together. Father, we praise you. We love you. Thank you for Christmas. God, thank you so much for not just ignoring us, but for loving us. For loving us so much that you didn't want us to remain in darkness. And so you bring us into your light. And as believers, God, we get to share in that joy, be reminded of our hope in Jesus. And that no matter what we face as a country, as a family, as individuals, God, your truth and your word will reign. Help us to walk faithfully. Help us to live faithfully. Help us to worship faithfully today as we seek to love you more. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening to this sermon from Foothills Church. If you made a decision to follow Christ while listening today, or if you have some more questions about what that looks like, then let us know. You can text FC Decision to 97000, or you can head over to foothillschurch.com slash decision. We hope you have a great week.